Hello, welcome to the Man of the Match show for Aston Villa 3, Everton 2. A disappointing afternoon again for the Toffees this season. 2-0 up again and threw it away. And while it's it's still bugging me, it is. It still hurts on a Monday when you're recording this. I have agreed this season to do a Man of the Match show after every Premier League game. Basically, what it is, if you haven't seen it before, is I pick a Man of the Match uh, on a Saturday or whenever the game is played, uh, just from my eyes, without looking at any of the numbers in the game. And then I review the numbers and do this show on a Monday to see whether or not my eyes lied, basically. That's what it's all about. I've done it so far this season. For Saturday, I mean, Everton, it's in, it's quite incredible for two games on the run. You take a 2-0 lead and, and blow it. Yeah, that's what Everton have done. I think they're the only the second team in Premier League history to lose two consecutive games, having led 2-0 in both of them. So those kind of stats are packing up a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, I think looking back at it, we can't have any complaints with the result. We really can't. We weren't good on the day. We had some chances. We could have scored more goals, no doubt about it. We could have conceded double what we did concede. You know, Jordan Pickford's made a couple of really good saves. Villa have missed good opportunities, um, as we did. And I think if you're looking at it, overall, I think the game probably should have ended about 7-4 to Aston Villa on, chan on good chances, really. Um and it is what it is. Everton right now are defending really poorly. Can't keep a clean sheet. Can't keep goals out. Um, you know, 13 goals conceded in four Premier League games is shocking, really, for us. And, and for a team that is supposedly built on defensive stability, there isn't any there right now. And it needs sorting out. But let's talk about the positives. And on Saturday, I give Dwight McNeil man of the match. I thought he was excellent at the weekend. But I think, I've said for a while, I think where he's, the manager's played him the last two weeks is the only position for him in our team. I don't think he's not quick enough for me to play in wide areas. Possibly if Everton played the flat three, he, he would be the wing back because of that left foot um, and because there isn't a reliance then to get up and down all day. I think, on the like I said, left, left wing for me is just not quick enough. And um, because we don't have a flying left foot, uh, left fullback who's quick, who goes on overlaps and gives him some space. He's off and out the game. But I think when you play him centrally, he's got a great shot on him. We know that. We've seen that on a number of occasions. Last week, he had that little, sorry, last time out, the little thread, the through ball for Dom, who scored for the second goal against Bournemouth. And he was doing stuff like that at the weekend. I think when he finds himself in those pockets with his left foot, I think he's a, he's a dangerous player. And for me, it's the only real position for him in this Everton side right now. Um, but he, like I said, he was excellent. I thought he was excellent just from eyes. He worked hard, scored a goal, you know, done really well pressing Amadou Onana, uh, who, you know, held his ankle as if he'd been clattered and he hadn't. Great finish from McNeil for the first one. And then the free kick was a great ball into a dangerous area, which, of course, Dominic Calvert-Lewin dispatched to make it 2-0. So really good um, contribution key contributions, goal and an assist of course, uh, can't do much more really when you're playing in that role and he did also create an opportunity for Calvert-Loon in the second half and Dom hit the crossbar, great little through ball, so for me, that's Dwight McNeil's position. Uh, let's have a look at his basic stats from the weekend just an overall view, so we see here, uh, 40 touches of the ball for Dwight, his pass, passing accuracy of 67% uh, one goal, one assist created two big chances uh, there's his heat map as well there you can see him popping over on the left hand side a little bit but that's his heat map for the weekend uh, we're going to dig into his numbers a bit more detail now so let's begin with those so we started with an overall view of his numbers there this sort of creative numbers you can see here, you know, accurate passing, just done that 67%. Uh, chances created four, it includes the corners and that, but he did create four chances. An XG of 0 0.02, so his goal, um, you know, shows how good that was right in the far corner. Uh, expected goals on target, XG OT is a 0 0.29. Expected assist, 0 0.87. The ball he put into that dangerous zone, that gives it that. 
and his XG and XA combined of 0.89. Shot accuracy here, 100%. He only had the one shot, which I guess will be a disappointment for Sean Dyke. Disappointment for us. Get the ball out of your feet. Get more shots away. Um, seen the 40 touches there. No dribbles. No uh, percent uh, accuracy on his dribbles. Lost one. Uh, seven passes into the final third. Accurate crosses, five out of eight. 63% from the accurate long balls. One out of three gave him 33% pass, uh, long ball accuracy. Just going back there to the shots, obviously, like I'm saying, he's had one shot there. We know that that's a real strength of his, getting it out of his feet in those areas and getting shots away. The management team, got to be encouraging that more from him. Try and get yourself in those pockets. Get yourself a bit closer to Dom. Get yourself that little bit of space. Get shots away. He could end up with seven, eight goals again if he can get it out of his feet and um, get those shots away. Just further on to his attacking numbers there. Two corners. He was offside once. He was dispossessed once. He had a non-penalty XE of 0.02. We saw that from the shot, of course, for his goal. Uh, let's have a look at his duels, the number of duels. Here we go. Here's his uh, duel figures. He uh, won one duel, lost three of his duels. Um, 33% on his ground duels, lost the one aerial one he attempted. And his final numbers for his defence here, you can see 100% of his tackles, just can do the one tackle, one defensive action, and he recovered the ball twice. So, overall, you know, decent numbers. The, the key things, obviously, in that of the goal and the, the assist, uh, we know that that's where his strengths lie. He does work hard. There's no, I don't think anyone can ever level that. He doesn't work hard. Uh, but I just feel like because he isn't a sprinter, that's why I'm saying in those pockets in midfield. And he did start out. He was a centre midfielder when he was at Manchester United. And when he went to Burnley, he was one of the uh, a two or a three-man midfield. So he knows that role well. Obviously playing at the tip of it. <clears throat> if you've got on Saturday, it was here to him and Idrissa Garner gave, wasn't it? You know, who knows if Mangala will force his way in there or will James Garner force his way in or will Mangala replace Adrissa? These are the things for the manager um, to come up with. But I think Dwight certainly has got a role to play at the tip of that midfield three. And uh, performances like that at the weekend, for me anyway, only sort of qualify that, only tell me that I'm right in thinking that's where he should be playing. He's had, you know, decent game last week as well. Shot last time out against Bournemouth. So he's followed it up with another one at the weekend. And that's why he's got to play there. And I'll be silly for the manager to move him right now because he's doing better. And I think we just look better with NGI. Even though Illiman and Jai has done really well in that role in his career, he seems to be enjoying that little bit of more freedom out wide. Uh, and obviously Everton's left back. Is an issue. You know, Michalenko went off. I think the manager said he was ill, suffering from illness, which is why he went off at the weekend. He didn't look himself anyway. But we haven't, we don't have another left footed left back now, do we? Ashley Young is the, the replacement for that. So that is clearly something Everton have got to look at as we move forward. Got to get more left footers into the squad so that we're not reliant on right footed players. And, a fast left back or a left back who's an attacking left back to complement or to battle for that position with Michalenko, I think is where Everton needs to go next. But like I say, I'm I'm happy with my decision of uh, Dwight McNeil as the man of the match at the weekend, and his numbers have backed it up. I have got one more notable mention. Uh, we do this as well. Someone else who I thought did really well at the weekend, and that is Dominic Calvert Lewin. I know. People will be they'd be screaming at the screen here now and saying he missed the sitter or whatever. I thought he played really well. He was, you know, he scored a great header. He's hit the crossbar with another chance. Yes, the one where he hesitates instead of just getting a shot away, and it uh, concert takes it off him. He could have even squared it to him. Jai was a big moment in the game. Personally, I thought he was offside. Don't know. VAR would have had to look at it again, but he still should have finished it or he still should have played the pass. No problem with anyone having a go on him for that. But let's have a look at his basic numbers from the weekend. There they are. 34 touches of the ball for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Passing accuracy, 69%. Higher than McNeil's, strangely. Uh, goals, one. Assists, none. And shots, three. Uh, you can see his heat map there. Good to see the red bit, you know, in the middle of the, the six-yard box there, so to speak, around that area. That's where Carlo Ancelotti, of course, told him he needed to be more in that position more and he'll get goals which he did 
Uh, yeah, I think he's done well. The last two games, I think he's had strong performances. The opening, sort of like the opening two games, I thought he was anonymous, really. Brighton, Tottenham, he didn't do much in. But I think certainly Bournemouth and Aston Villa, I thought he's been much better. Real threat, he got two goals in his last two games. Great header at the weekend. Yes, he should have scored the other chance. The one that hit the crossbar, I don't know. I think he hit it well. He, it hits the underside of the bar. He's a bit unlucky with that one, I think. He's, he's got a good, powerful shot away. It's beaten Martin as the keeper. You know, we know that isn't a massive strength that Dominic calvert Lewin's running through like that. Something for him to work on, sure he is. Uh, but I just think overall, he held the ball up well. You know, like you said, linked the play well. His numbers, they're 69% passing accuracy shows he's linked the play well. And it was another good performance from him. Hopefully, there's more. The goals will continue to flow. Hopefully, he'll become a little bit more clinical. And hopefully, Everton will start winning some games. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you agree with me with Dwight McNeil being man of the match? Uh, Sofa score, who scored? Uh, Fought mob. All at Dominic. Cal uh, sorry, all at Dwight McNeil as Everton's best performer. That will be because he scored a goal and, and got an assist. Of course, it automatically bumps it right up. But I thought overall play, he was our best player. Uh, and what what are your feelings on how Calvert Lewin's performing at the moment? Let me know in the comments section below. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. As we head towards that hundred thousand subscriber mark. Uh, thanks very much for watching. See you later.